Well, welcome back to the Mini Machine Shop. I'm Dave. I remember to say it that time. I'm Dave. Not much has happened since yesterday when I posted the other video on the new toolbox here. Um, the only thing I did get, though, that came in the mail, like I said, uh, now I have two Fowler 1 to 2 inch micrometers. And I was hoping that the new one, was it the third one that arrived, I was hoping that it was really accurate. Yes, it really is accurate. I checked it, it's right on the money, but the hilarious thing is this case is also broken. But I'm just going to throw in a towel and say, forget it. Uh, I've got two of them, don't know what to do with two. I actually got to use it today. I was making another, um, this guy actually. I was saying yesterday that um, I've got the metric one because I couldn't find one. So let me bring that up there so you guys can see it. Uh, here it is, upside down right. Hopefully it goes in focus. But that's the metric uh, machine screw thread checker that I did. And I made today, here's the SAE one. So this is nice and thick. I love it. I've already put some screws in there to test it and it's beautiful. I love it. So I've got both of those and I used the, the micrometer to make sure both of them were the same size because I couldn't get the caliper in the end mill where the hit. Um, the truck was, everything was blocking it, so I used the, can, the micrometer and it works perfectly. Um, what I want to do today is I want to try to get the camera real close on the lathe. I had promised I was going to show uh, at some point how I do different finishes on turning surfaces and so on. I did order, uh, I've got the Harbor Freight quarter inch indexable uh, carbide turning set and I never could find the replacements for it for it for the carbide pieces so I found this at this toolinghouse.com uh, you can get 10 and I ordered a TCMT 21.51 and it's a C5 carbide and it looked from the specifications that it was going to be the right size but no it's quite a bit off so what I did was I took one of the old um, indexables and I took a carbide end mill and I cut it back just a little bit further. I don't know if you can see that, but this the back edge is cut back a little bit further so that I could put it in there and the old screws fit. They go in a lot further, but it holds it tight. And I have a feeling that the actual metal here for these guys are is too hard, is really hard because I think I ruined a carbide end mill. I was with the eye loop looking at the ends and the ends points of the end mill kind of look like they're a little messed up, but we'll see. So let me get the camera set up real close on the lathe and show you how I can do some of the surfaces and the comparison between this carbide and the Harbor Freight carbide. All right, hopefully that's pretty good lighting. Kind of looks like it. So this is the Harbor Freight indexable carbide. And I always set with this guy an angle of about five degrees. And like I said, I hope I find that sweet spot someday. All right, bring this in. And kind of see the finishes. We'll do a comparison here. I'm up about halfway on the speed dial and bring it in here I'm just touching it go in 2000 and I'm going real slow because this would be essentially a finishing cut and you can see I hope in the light it's got some grooves in it so this wouldn't be acceptable for me as a final product I can actually bring it back and see what goes in there. Yeah, it's not really doing much of anything. Oh, actually, I forgot to turn on the spotlight. That might help. Turn that down. So, is that going to do anything? That gives it a nice... Oh, you can see the grain in there. See, it's all grainy. 
All right, let's just keep the same angle, take that out. Let me put in that other TCMT bits so you can kind of see a comparison on what it does. Halfway again. Touch it. You can definitely see the difference. It's shiny, it's smoother. It's supposed to have a chip breaker, but it's not really breaking any chips on it. It's lining up all over the place. It's kind of keep flying up now. Let me get rid of these strings. That is a nicer surface. Still needs to be worked on, but it's a nicer surface. Um, so let me show you some of the different sanding techniques that I use to change that surface around. Try different sandpapers. Here's a um, 320 grit, which is really pretty rough. And when I do it, I don't press. Oh! Spark just went in there and blew up my leg. finishing this video but I've got a small technical problem. Um, as you saw the TCMT insert wasn't really breaking the chips it was giving me a long uh, lead down here and I had a bunch of them here so I, it was starting to get in my way so I grabbed them and threw them behind the lathe and the next thing I know is I heard a loud pop and I saw a nice little spark and I guess they worked their way into the motor somehow. Being an electrical engineer, I'm looking at the motor control board and it pretty much so took everything out. So I don't have a working lathe now. Um, <laughs> I saw 110 volts on the MOSFET so I know everything's gone. Uh, researching on the internet, there was a place that said they'll look at it for free, tell you whether it's repairable or not. I'm pretty sure it's not, when they say not repairable, it's because all the pulse width modulator chips on this board is surface mount, and they're probably not equipped to deal with surface mount. Um, nobody has it for sale. Um, I've got the model number on it, but I googled it all over the place and I can't find it. Uh, Grizzly usually has an equivalent lathe, but their circuitry is completely different. So my options left are to, there is on Craigslist, another one of these listed for $350. Maybe I can get it for $300. But I can go and pick that up and then just replace the board, but I'm not sure the condition of the motor now. Or I'm uh, you know, shame too, because I put a lot of work into this lathe, getting it really nice and clean. So my option is to get the one off of Craigslist and use that and see how it is or to um, go to Grizzly, and I've always wanted a longer bed here, get their uh, 7 by 14 inch guy, which is just, what does it say, almost $700, get that one shipped in. So if anybody has any suggestions about what to do, let me know, or if they have any recommendations on another lathe that they think is really good, please let me know. Until then, my lathe is out of service. Bye.